Hello, and welcome to the Basic CES Workshop, Section 6. Overview. Section 6 is a campsite project consisting of an extended roadway ending in a drive-in campsite with amenities. There are two practice activities using assembly takeoff, and in this introduction we will do a deep dive on the CES assembly features. This is a very useful methodology for performing takeoff, so we'll spend some time giving you the details. It's recommended that you have completed sections 1 through 5 before attempting this section. Reminder to watch the recording for each activity all the way through before attempting the work yourself. I'll indicate when you are to stop the recording and perform the activity. Let's begin. Introduction. You'll access assemblies from the toolbar icon, the third one over in the grouping of your takeoff tools here. This is a good time to set the pane to a viewing area that you prefer. You can take a corner, open it up. It's a three-paned window. You can adjust the vertical split bar here or the horizontal split bar. And when you've got it in a shape and a form and a position that you like, hold your shift key down and click close. And next time you launch assembly takeoff, it should give you that same view and position. The assembly list will consist of yellow folders, groups of assemblies. As you double click the groups, they'll open to the assemblies themselves. The list will consist of an assembly ID and an assembly description. Assembly IDs that contain an N are park specific assemblies. IDs that don't have an N are RS means assemblies. Jump is the quickest way to access an assembly. By clicking on an assembly and typing the assembly ID, the list will jump to that location. In the activities, you will use the find function, but because of the great number of assemblies, find will be time consuming but essential until you learn how the assemblies are organized. Note the uniformat structure of the assembly list. As you become familiar with the indexes, the jump feature will become your preferred method of accessing an assembly. We'll click and we're going to type G, remember it's case sensitive, 2040. And that takes us immediately to the site development assemblies. We'll open up the group folder for site development and a double click launches the assembly. Now note that all methods of CES takeoff achieve the same basic result. Each method returns items to your spreadsheet. Launching the assembly gathers the items specific to the task in the item grid. There's no searching required for items. Variables become visible in the variable pane, upper right. Here you'll input values for the objects you want to take off. The assembly provides opportunity for logic, as in the selection of items. So if we click in Stonewall Type, you'll notice by typing a numeric value 1 or 2, you can choose the dry set or the mortar set stone. Assemblies also have logic. A yes-no question can lead you to other variable inputs. The variable list itself also functions as a checklist. Variable inputs may have minimum and maximums, limiting your choices to available items 
or ranges of values. Max height, if we try and type a zero, notice that we'll get a message that the minimum height would be at one and telling you the number you have entered is too small. If you do stonewall type and try and type a three, again you'll see a maximum message saying the number you've entered is too large. This prevents you from entering values that won't return available items or ranges of values within the database. The pass concept. Passes allow you to take off different portions of the work in a single assembly instance. For this stone wall, we'll make three passes. Each pass will have different attributes. So in pass one, we'll pick the dry set stone by using the, the variable value one here. Our length will be 10 feet, our height two feet, no extra labor. You execute the pass by clicking the Add Pass button here, the purple plus. When you click that, the variables are run against the embedded formulas in the assembly, and your quantity results and item selections are returned here. Additionally, the total cost is displayed in the status bar here, the total quantity, in our case 20 square feet, and then a unit cost developed from the cost and the quantity showing you the cost per, and in this case, square feet. Note that pass one is date and time stamped here, and the assembly is ready to complete another pass, showing focus on the new pass row, and the pass indicator here is indicating that the variable pane is ready to do pass number two. For our pass number two, We'll stick with a dry set wall. We have a section of wall that's eight feet long and this time four feet high. And we click the purple plus. Now the quantities in the item grid are a cum, accumulation of both passes now. This is the quantities for pass one and two. Note that the quantity now is the combination of one and two as, as the cost is and then this is the average cost per square foot for passes one and two. In pass three, we'll take off two sections of wall. We have a wall on either side of a trail, so our quantity now will be two. And we'll use a mortar set wall, so we change the variable value to two. This, these sections are 12 foot long and six foot high. We'll click the add pass button. Notice the additional wall type appears in the item grid with the quantity. The total square footage of all three wall passes, the total cost of all three wall passes, and now the average square foot of all three wall passes. Passes themselves can be documented when you have focus on a pass you can click the paper clip here and add a pass note. This pass note will not be visible from the spreadsheet itself, but it'll be part of the audit trail each and every time you review this assembly. So this might be the trail section one. Pass two might be the section after bridge and pass three would be our pass between the low hill. And each time you click on the pass now, you'll see each note that you've added to your pass itself. Let's say for the moment we're complete. Notice that at this moment, the items have not been added to your spreadsheet. You'll add the items to your spreadsheet by clicking OK. 
We'll close the assembly, take off for the moment. And there's always a sequence tab here that will sequence your estimate by assembly. By clicking that, those assembly results are displayed here. At any time from your spreadsheet, you can right click on the assembly overline and choose to review assembly. This launches assembly takeoff again. It places you right back in the assembly at the moment you clicked OK and wrote these items to the spreadsheet. You can come back into review assembly after this session is closed, three hours from now, three days from now, three weeks from now. This audit trail will be available to you within your estimate. Looking at the blue folder, there's an audit trail. If you right click, you can view the pass audit and your passes are nicely listed here with your quantity inputs along with the pass notes. These can also be printed out if you need to document your takeoff here. And additionally, change management is easily handled here with a replace pass feature. So we've decided that pass two, the section after the bridge now, needs to be a foot taller now than it was in our initial takeoff. Notice as we click on each pass, the assembly values here are repopulated. We click back on pass two, we noted that it was eight foot long and four foot high. We now want to change it to eight foot long and five foot high. So with focus on the pass that we want to replace, we'll click the value that changes and type in the new value and simply go down to the replace pass button just to the right of the add pass. Now add pass would add another pass and that's not what we want to do at the moment where we'd like to replace pass 2 so we're going to click the replace pass button. And notice that pass 4 and 5 are added to the pass list. If we click on pass 2, notice that the system has added a pass replaced by pass 5 in the pass notes. The original variable values are still present here. If we click on pass 4, notice that the quantity has been changed by the system to a negative one with the original variable values here. So if you combine pass 2 and pass 4, essentially you have no impact on the assembly takeoff. Pass 4 has backed out or reversed pass 2. And now it's pass 5 that we note that has done the actual replacing of pass 2. Note that our height here is 5. And again the quantity results are, are present here as the average now of all five passes along with the total quantity, cost, and then the average cost per square foot. Additionally you have some other edit capabilities here. At any time you can right click on an item in your item grid and use a substitute feature to select another item. Now notice that the database is opened and you have focus on the very item that you launched your substitute item from. This would allow you to pick another item in the same general genre of the item that you launched from. You can also right click and choose add item. When we choose add item the past pane will become essentially the quick takeoff list and function identically to item takeoff that you worked with in the previous section. So at this point you can begin to open your phases, find any item that you may want to add to your assembly, your right click, search, sort item list by, the collapse, expand, sort item list by description, the takeoff features that you've 
practiced and the previous activities here are available to you and you can add items on the fly to your assembly. Lastly, you can right click and choose adjust productivity and this will globally adjust all the items in the assembly that have units of time. Now remember we're working with the productivity field so lowering productivity raises the price. So in this case a negative number like negative 20 percent will raise the price of the labor in our assembly. We can click OK. Notice the price increases. You can right click again and continue to adjust. You can enter an additional adjustment. You can also undo the adjustment or you can choose to finalize it. Items that have been adjusted are indicated by a red triangle. Your detail window is available to you here and you can actually hover tip over that red triangle and see the adjustment percentage and the original amount. All your edit features are available to you here on an item by item basis before you write the items to your spreadsheet. Additionally you can right click, adjust productivity and undo the adjustment and return it to the original values. We'll click OK and we'll close. Activity 12, Campsite Road Extension. We'll start by creating a CESS estimate. So once again, you'll find your region, your park folder, the other folder, the CESS workshop folder, and then your user name. You'll right click new timberline estimate this will be our campsite estimate and as before follow the red asterisks on the navigation pane here on the left and that will lead you to the required fields Verify that your open estimate checkbox is checked and click finish. We'll click assembly, take off and review. And again, this is a good time to do your pane sizing. Hold the shift key down when you click close the first time. That preserves that window view. We'll use the binoculars for the find feature. And we're searching for the road extension. So we'll just type road start from beginning guarantees that you'll start at the top of the list and then click the go button.
we'll find G2010.232-1050. And when you see that in the list, just double click. That puts focus on that particular assembly in the assembly list. And then double click again to launch the assembly and have the assembly find your items and place them in the item grid for you. All we need to do here is put in the length of road, 200 feet, and click the Add Pass button. Notice that many variable values of various unit types are returned because of the embedded formulas that are aligned with the particular takeoff unit of the item itself. You can check the footage, make sure you're correct here, verify the total cost, and then examine the cost per unit and decide is that unit cost correct for your project. If you're satisfied with that, you click OK, close, and those items are returned into your spreadsheet. And again, you can click the Assembly Sequence tab here to organize your estimate by assembly. The unit cost, the quantity, are all repeated here in the assembly overline, the cost per unit and the total cost, just as you saw in the status bar. Pause the recording and complete activity 12. Activity 13. We'll add the campsite and the amenities by using a series of smart assemblies. So let's start by adding the drive-in campsite with a pad and a parking spur. We'll add picnic tables, trash containers, fireplace, and an electrical pedestal. Click Assembly Takeoff Review. The Find button, your binoculars and type campsite drive. Click the go button. When the campground drive-in campsite pad assembly appears, N003, we'll double click. We get focus in the list and we double click again to load the assembly and all the items. Our length will be 75 feet, width is 40, and we'll leave edging blank. We don't need edging here and we'll take the defaults for the remaining variable choices, depth of bedding 6 inch, the spur surface will be gravel, spur length is a defined 30 by 24. Click Add Pass and again your assembly results appear here with all the different unit types and quantities. The total square footage is returned, total cost cost per square foot. We'll click OK, add those items to our spreadsheet. And since we're in the campground assembly group here, we can simply scroll to find the rest of our amenities. Let's do our trash containers with N012, double click, and this time we're going to do two different types of containers which we'll accomplish by taking off two passes. Our first pass, the quantity will be one, container type is one, and in that holder we only have one receptacle. Click the purple plus, and on our next pass 
we're going to choose one container again with a container type of three and add that container now to your assembly. That does it for our containers. Click OK. Add the fireplace using NO2O and the quantity is one. It knows the relationship between one fireplace and the rest of these components. So you just click the purple plus. Check the cost. Click OK. Add the items to your spreadsheet. Lastly, we'll go to N070, adding the electrical pedestal. Double click, brings your items in, quantities one, you just click the purple plus. Add those items to your spreadsheet. Click close, and your assembly now is populated with a full complement of campsite, including the access road. Pause the recording and complete activity 13.